Now, one man's obsession with memorabilia from the band The Jam has been transforming Liverpool's Cunard building into a mecca for mods from all around the world. But as Simon O'Brien has been finding out, his collection may never have seen the light of day because of the Manchester bomb 20 years ago. This may look like the London Underground, but I am in fact in the heart of Liverpool's city centre. That said, I am firmly down in the tube station at midnight. The distant echo of faraway voices, but in faraway trains. The Cunard building in Liverpool is currently exhibiting the biggest collection of jam memorabilia since the band split in 1982, and it's all thanks to this man. Den Davis has been a fan of the jam all his life. He's been collecting anything jam related since first going to see them play at the Apollo in Manchester when he was just 12. I just love the idea of these, they look cool, I, I like the, probably the, the men thing about it, the aggressiveness of it and everything, it was getting rid of that wishy-washy pop that was around at that time. Two years into getting into the jam I went to a record fair in Manchester, back of Piccadilly Records, and I found this yellow vinyl version of the Butterfly Collector from America, and I just thought, cool, and, and it, it was a bug. Once you did it, you know, you wanted to, to make sure you got the right ones and then you learn about it and you understand about it and it became a bit of a habit for a long time. Bought in June 96, disaster struck. Then the jam collection was on display in a music shop in Manchester's Corn Exchange building when they were told to evacuate following a bomb warning. The police officers come running down the stairs inside the record shop and it was like, get out, there's a bomb and no one was believing them at all. And eventually, Eventually they did make us move and we came out to, to it must have been around this spot because I can clearly remember seeing the post box and what I thought was the red van, obviously it was a red cabin and the, and the white van behind it. It was incredible that we were that close to when the first, the, the, the explosion went off from the, the robot, we're like, oh, is that it? You know, it's like, what, what have we been evacuated for that for? And then the main bomb went and the blast was incredible and all the windows shattered behind us and all the birds came flying out of all the, the crevices of the building there and everything. then everyone just started scattering. Miraculously, no one was killed by the bomb, but the damage was extensive. The Corn Exchange building where Den's collection had been on display took the full force of the blast. It was probably a month before we could actually go back in um, and we all turned up expecting, you know, they'd, they'd actually taken away and the water, the fire had taken it all out and, and they'd literally scrapped everything so that every single item was gone. And I sulked about it for about four years. When you say sulk, kind of explain what you mean by that. Sulked, cried, just, just put me, buried my head and thought, oh, that's it then, isn't it? There were some items that can't be replaced. There were some one-off one -off acetates and things like that. You're never going to get back. So I just sulked about it and then just thought, yeah, it's never going to happen. And then one day, I just, I don't know, new millennium, I thought, right, give it a go. And I think a lot of people probably had New Year's resolutions that year, didn't they? You know, and mine was, I'm going to rebuild my jam collection. Which is what he did. Over time, Den replaced all the vinyl he'd lost in the bomb, but he didn't stop there. He now owns the biggest collection of jam vinyl and memorabilia in the world. Last year, it went on display in London, and this summer, 20 years after his original collection was destroyed in the Manchester bomb, it returned to the Northwest when it came to Liverpool. Some bands make amazing music, some bands have incredible lyrics, and some bands have that just absolutely, fabulously cool look. Well, when you put all three together, what you get? You get the jam. This is a modern world. This is a modern world. The exhibition is a combination of Den's personal jam collection and items the band has donated to it themselves including some amazing doodles by frontman Paul Weller when he was a schoolboy. I mean, this is the stuff for me. <laughs> this is a sketch pad from Paul Weller when he was 14 years old. And, you know, so he's got himself on the scooter with the mod look. He already knows where he wants to go. You can already see the style of the band here. And there, there look, four piece here with the jam on the drum kit. 
it's got the image, except this is a four piece, not a three piece. And the look is very, very reminiscent of the Beatles. You can see where the inspiration is from. But how did he know at 14 that this is what he was going to be? This was his destiny. Amazing. In June, jam fans from all over the country descended on Liverpool for the opening night of the exhibition. And there was a very special visitor, jam drummer Rick Buckler. What do you think? It's good. Yeah, yeah. I've only been around 90% of it, but yeah. <laughs> uh, unless there's more that I haven't seen. But yeah, it looks absolutely fabulous. And, and also, I mean, for you, like it's shift down memory lane, isn't it? Because there's images of you from when you were like, you know, just starting out. I know, I keep saying, who's that? Who's that? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's my age. Who's that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The passion that people have for the jam, you know, you, the, your, the fans are still there, yeah. and people like Denny, you know, it's amazing, really, isn't it? That, that he, 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 he spends his whole life searching around to find yeah. bits and pieces. I think it's amazing that people have, have found value in collecting the stuff and keeping it, you know, and so much of it, you know, and I think it was probably because it was it um, became such a big part of their lives, you know, as well as our lives, you know, uh, the three of us. So that's, that's really nice to know that, that, that the longevity of that is still there, you know, and uh, people are still interested. And, uh, and I, I, you know, I'm, I wish this the, uh, the exhibition every success because uh, I think they've done a great job on putting it together. Paul Weller's sister Nikki and her partner Russell Reader have collaborated with Dan on the exhibition. I was actually clearing out my brother's shed, doing up a cottage for him. Bizarre. Um, but it was like, do you know what, we were finding stuff that he had no clue he had including those little books with the doodles in. And um, as, as we kind of uncovered the family stuff, it was like, actually, we've got just as much as Den, but it's completely different and it's really personal. And then Bruce and Rick kind of got on board as well. And I remember saying to my brother, we're thinking of doing an exhibition about the jam. And he was like, who is going to come and see an exhibition about the jam? It's like, and I was like, well, you know, you never know. So what was the reaction? What was Paul's reaction when he saw the stuff? He just like... Oh my God, that's my old school book. Can I have it back after the exhibition? It was like, you haven't looked at it for like the last 40 years, but yeah, you can. But then of course I've kept everything and moved on to Liverpool and I'm so pleased we're in Liverpool. It's just amazing. <laughs> And it was just like old times when Bruce Foxton visited the exhibition in August. His band, From the Jam, is still touring and performing the original songs. The demand is getting bigger. You know, From the Jam, we're out on the road pretty much as, as much as we want to be. And the audiences are like from my age downwards. You know, there's young people coming, which is really healthy, that are discovering the jam for the first time. Um, and long may that, that carry on, so as long as there's a, a demand, you know, we'll, we'll be out doing it. And it is a testament to the great songs, you know, the writing and the playing from all three of us. It just worked, it gelled. You were talking about the gig a moment ago, and uh, it was a lovely crowd and really friendly and, uh, and got the same affection for those jam songs as I have still. But it was really weird, I'm glancing around looking at all these young shots of me and that. Last week, Paul Weller made a flying visit to see the exhibition for himself and gave it his seal of approval. It was a proud moment for Den. 20 years on from losing his original jam collection in the Manchester bomb, Den says he could never have imagined what he's achieved. When it got blown up, it was there was no way did I think at that point that I'd ever be doing this 20 years later, or even the band's legacy would, would perhaps last 20 years later. But on both counts, it's really proven that, yeah, it's... It is what it is, and the band's legacy is going to go on for a lot longer, um, and hopefully the show will go on for a lot longer as well. Now that is a real trip down memory lane, and the exhibition is on until October the 5th. We're back next Monday. See you then. Goodbye. <laughs>